afternoon and welcome to my turbo shed if you're wondering why it's called a turbo shed well it's basically a shed full of turbos let me show you yeah there's uh, quite a few I'll do something with them all one day but I'm a bit of a collector it seems This isn't even all of them, this is just sort of ones in various states of need cleaning up at least, or repairing. I've got others, <laughs> probably twice as many as this. Anyway, what I'm basically doing today is changing the turbine housing on this Garrett GTX 2860R Gen 2. And also we'll show you some stuff about porting the turbine inlet and well how to take this apart and various other turbo related things that might teach you something first up this is a Garrett GTX 2860R Gen 2 main difference between Gen 1 and Gen 2 is the turbine wheel on a Gen 2 is far higher flowing than Gen 1 turbine wheels well GTX Gen 1's and GT series is the same turbine wheel which is a bit mismatched for the compressor in my opinion they don't flow as well as the compressor can so you might have like a 450 brakes worth of compressor wheel but the turbine wheel will be choking the engine way before the compressor wheel but these gen 2's do a good part in getting rid of that issue I mean a gen 2 2860 wheel with um, an 86 turbine housing will flow about as much as a GT30 wheel will with a 63 housing whereas a Gen 1 2860 turbine wheel even with the biggest housing doesn't flow anywhere near as much as a GT30 wheel if I was buying a GTX I would only consider a Gen 2 personally being a Gen 2 GTX you've got obviously the 11 blade I think it's 11 1 2 3 4 no only 8 on this one but lots of blade billet wheel anti-surge inlet which is good because Garrett's do tend to suffer from compressor surge due to the fairly small turbine wheels they seem to run and yeah it's got a speed sensor hole if you needed one but that's pretty uh, niche market obviously water and oil cooled T2 inlet flange and this is one which I've actually ported previously to match the manifold it's on and um, this actual turbo is off a friends Renault 5 GT turbo so the 1.4 litre C1J engine which is an 8 valve push rod 1960s designed engine which isn't really one for good power but pretty bloody strong for 1.4 and done right it can make good power this one at the moment was making 255 horsepower on the stock bottom end and hopefully will be about 300 maybe more in in a few months I've never really been one for I don't, I don't want to say it but I don't necessarily think Garrett's the most strongest reliable turbos on the planet especially considering the cost to buy them and repair them um, but they are good there's no two ways about that um, this one's only done about 3,000 miles and it's got no in you know side play but it has got in out play which is not good not enough to hit the housing so it's perfectly still usable but there is some that you can feel which is pretty bad for very low miles and unfortunately a new core for one of these a there is none in the uk so have to be ordered from abroad and b they're about eight nine hundred quid which is mental so and there's no really repairing them you just buy a new chra or the core as in this whole center bit including the compressor and turbine wheels Forge Motorsport actuator on it. They come with an actuator, but this is much more suited for what they needed. And it's a piston one, so there's no diaphragm, so it can never uh, split a diaphragm and overboost. Just the normal oil feeds and returns, nothing special. Um, what I'm doing today is changing this turbine housing, which is a 64, I believe. Um, I don't know if you can see that, probably not on camera, but that's a 64 just there. And I'm going to be changing it to a, the largest one, which is an 86, basically on the quest for the maximum amount of turbine flow and for the maximum amount of power we can get from this tiny little 1.4 litre engine. Right then, first job, removing the turbine engine. 
sometimes this can be a massive ball ache on cars especially if it's been on there a while because the bolt sees up and especially with rust and heat basically and dirt and the turbine itself kind of wants to weld itself to the core with this one's not done that many miles to be honest so this should be relatively simple all we really need for this is two tools a thin screwdriver to pop the actuator um, arm c-clip off and a 13 mil spanner to undo all the bolts which hold the turbine housing on so let's show you right so c-clip dead easy little tiny screwdriver pop it in it comes off and that is it little tiny c-clip once that's off you can pop the actuator off easy and then now I don't know if you see from there but that's what the actuator does opens and closes the wastegate flap right then the bolts hopefully they shouldn't be too tricky the trick to doing this so you don't break anything is don't force it with your hand if you can do it with your hand get a spanner on there get a rubber hammer that rubber softens the blow a bit and give it some taps so there you go easy because the thing is if you're around the bolt on the turbo trying to trying to get it out after is one of the most almighty pains in the ass you've ever tried because some are in awkward places you need to kind of take them out that's why I didn't loosen them all at once because most of them are totally inaccessible but you can now can spin it so you even with my fat fingers you take out the bolts one at a time when you can get to them some of these are right pains in the ass we're nearly there that's actually both the clamps are able to be taken off right that's the last bolt now we can remove the core and the front section from the turbine housing simple um, I'll tell you what else I'll show you because people always bring it up in when they're talking turbo specs and don't really know what they're talking about um, the compressor housing AR AR.60 says it inside there as well um, compressor housing AR isn't that important bigger is better um, but you, you've almost got no options generally go for if there's a bigger one available go for a bigger one but 99% of turbos have one option and one option only for the compressor don't worry about it it's only Garrett really that mention what AR the compressor is I think practically everybody but Garrett don't even mention it they just the compressor housing is compressor housing it's tough however turbo housing AR is the important one this one is, I don't know if you can see, the 64, which is the, the more common, smaller size for these. Housing size affects spool, but it's a trade-off because the smaller the housing, the faster the spool, but the smaller the housing, the lower the power for any given amount of boost, the higher the back pressure as well, and the higher back pressure means more heat in the engine, less reliability potentially, and a lot of reason why drag cars where spool is no issue run massive massive turbine housings because the lower the pre-turbine back pressure they can get the better the happier the engine is basically no different to an NA car having a restrictive exhaust you right, what we're doing is changing from this 64 to what's in this swanky Garrett box which is an 86 housing which should say it somewhere there you go, 86. That is the two housings side by side. They are a direct replacement. The difference is really, 86 housing is, I mean physically you can see it's a little bit bigger, slightly taller, ever so slightly fatter, and generally it flows more. It will spool up not quite as fast. If your car doesn't spool up as fast, it generally gives more usable rev range at the top of the RPM so you can just rev it more just learn to change gear you're not you know 
If you want all low down power, own a diesel and don't expect any top end power. You can't have it all with any engine, it just doesn't work like that. Before I put the turbine housing back on the GTX 2860, I want to port match it because, as this will easily show you, the difference between the port size it comes when you buy it and the port size of the manifold you're fitting it to, which is this one, is often vastly different. Um, and the thing is, the reason you want to port match things is because if you've got exhaust gas hitting a solid wall of metal, which is what you got there, it disrupts the flow, which ruins spool, it ruins, well, it ruins power, it ruins everything. There is no advantage to it in any way. It doesn't have to be ported all the way in, it literally just needs to be necked in, smoothed, so it gradually goes in. There's no solid walls for it to hit. This is just a random T2 gasket I've got lying around over there. Um, if we put it on this one, it's pretty much on the money. There's, it's actually, this is ported out a little larger, but this is to match the manifold rather than this gasket which is off something else. But on this, even even though this gasket is smaller than that port, look at the difference. All around the edge, walls to hit. It might seem minor, but it's fair percentage still of the entire area, and it's well worth doing. And on this particular manifold this is going on, it is actually bigger than that. The easiest way to make a template to port match is to get a piece of paper and some dirty fingers, copy it, just do a rubbing like if you're still at primary school. So, quick rubbing with your sooty fingers. And lo and behold, you have the template which you need to copy that with. Stanley knife. And none of this has to be exact, but as long as turbine inlet flange is bigger slight obviously only slightly but bigger than the manifold outlet flange so the gas is not hitting any flat plates that's good enough that is a rough gasket match which we will check but compared to the original absolutely miles out right then next job before it was back together is port matching the housing which I've not got the manifold here but it doesn't matter because I'm copying the old turbine housing inlet and what you're going to use or what I use at least is a electric die grinder this is a, a carbide bit which chews through any kind of metal really really fast and if you haven't got one you could use a Dremel you could use you could use hand files really but it takes a significantly longer amount of time. To be honest, the die grinder is well worth the money in time saved. But you can do it with this in about 10 minutes in all honesty. It's worth the investment. As I said, I'll be using this as a rough template. For now, you won't even need to be that close to that because it's a long way away. But as you get closer, you'll have to keep checking. But this is basically what you do. So yeah, literally a few seconds and you've already got a significant amount removed. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to check it in this vice and do it all because A, it's going to be a bit boring to watch and B, it's a pain in the ass by hand. You really want to have this held steady so you can have full control over this. Also wear goggles because you'll end up blinding yourself, which I've done many times. They might look stupid. But unless you're doing a YouTube video like this, no one can see, so whatever. Right, this is the finished article. This took 10 minutes, 15 minutes, not too long. Um, like I said before, it don't have to be perfect. It just needs to get rid of any of the edges it was hitting. There's no need to port far in, because in all honesty, I don't think you can really see. I'll try and take some photos to show you. But once you're past about there, it necks in so much that the inlet itself is probably the least restrictive part of the turbo. It just needs to be a gradual slope rather than any flat faces. It's like 
walking up a slope rather than climbing up a brick wall basically that is the basics of flow you don't have to overcomplicate things with cars and flow it's all pretty basic um i didn't do it on camera because it's not interesting but what you always need to do once you've finished port matching it is clean out all the swarf that you've basically all the shards of metal that you've cut off the housing i personally use a massive great bucket of various horrendous chemicals it's very good to get off oil and stuff but but a can of brake cleaner do it an airline is always useful if you've got an airline that makes it really easy but you still use brake cleaner and stuff to blast into the little bits because obviously washing it out with a fluid is uh, an easy way to reinstall a turbine housing it's pretty much like all your Haynes manuals always say refitting is a reversal of removal Once we're all in, 13 mil spanner again. I tend to go round them, nipping them up, not super tight, and then go around again. And that, my friends, is that. While the 36 housing is a direct swap for the 64 that is just replaced, now I've noticed one slight difference, and that is it's made the actuator arm and the wastegate flap arm itself just slip on easily like that and that isn't correct you do want a bit of preload and that is where this the actuator arm needs to be in tension against that to prevent the, the wastegate flap from slightly creeping open too early which will slow the onset of boost because rather than go all the exhaust gas going through the turbine wheel some even if it's only a tiny amount will escape through the slightly cracked open wastegate what you generally want is half a hole of preload so what i mean by that is you have to see half of that overlapping here so we need to shorten this arm by about three mil quite simple you need to hold this in place slacken off this bolt there you go wind back the bolt and then wind this in a bit until it's like half a hole overlapping the question is then how do you pull it back on because this is a 20 psi spring so pretty bloody strong you're not easily moving it by hand the answer is one of these a mitivac um, it's just a little hand operated pump that does pressure or vacuum so all we need to do is pop it on the end of the actuator give it a few pumps until it, here we go starts moving it it's a 20 psi spring starts moving about 17 and a half so once it's overlapped enough you can easily push it on and then release the pressure and it's going nowhere simple again these things are probably well worth the money if you're messing with actuators a lot because trying to do it any other way especially by hand is a massive massive pain last real job was the first real job before which is put the little c-clip back on there you go that realistically is going nowhere and we're done I don't know if you guys would want but I can easily do a tech where I dismantle a turbo just down to its different components to show you a how to do it all and b what it's like inside I've got quite a few crappy turbos that I've never took apart so it'd be a bit of a challenge hopefully you like this video hopefully I can edit it into something that's worth watching and um, yeah, make sure you like and subscribe and you'll see a lot more from me soon with lots more tech related stuff, tests and basically anything I can think of that I think you guys will like. So like